All right, welcome back to Just Car Guys, the show where me and my dad talk about the latest and greatest car news and car stories from the last week. And as usual, I haven't seen any of the content that Anthony has prepared for us today, so looking forward to seeing what we've got uh, in the news. We've got some interesting stuff, especially with SEMA. There have been a lot of cool little oh, yeah, things that's revealed. Right. Yeah. So first up here, we have some more details on the Toyota BZ4X EV. So the crossover comes to the U.S. in the middle of next year, and Toyota has given us some of the global specs and has confirmed that we will see seven more BZ models that will be coming after 2025. So BZ stands for Beyond Zero. That's kind of their EV sub-brand. So with these, similar in size to the RAV4, the BZ4X features a 64 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack 201 horsepower in the front wheel drive version and 215 horsepower in the dual motor all-wheel drive configuration the all-wheel drive is expected to reach 0 to 60 in a whopping 7.7 seconds and it is expected to get 230 miles of range for the front wheel drive and 200 for the all-wheel drive on a 150 kilowatt fast charger toyota claims it can replenish 80 percent of its battery in just 30 minutes and the roof will eventually feature solar panels which would be pretty cool standard toyota i I like it. it looks pretty good. I, I think it's I think it's it. great the way yeah. what they're what they're gonna launch with really. Yeah. And I mean, I know you kind of made a joke with the seven second, oh, yeah. but but the reality is that's quicker than that Subaru Legacy we had like <laughs> yeah. back when we had it. You know, like um, so and you know decent range. Yeah, it's got 100%. pretty good looks. Like uh, really yeah, that's cool. It looks pretty solid. Looking forward to to seeing it uh, in person yeah. very curious as well to see what those seven other models are gonna be mm, yeah maybe we'll get ourselves a electric toyota sports car mm, well, that'd be super interesting super electric super that'd be kind of cool so next here this is this one's kind of strange ford has a very interesting new pen so meet the exhaust tip retract module this what? quote enables the exhaust tips to be retracted a certain length when in an off-road mode in order to take the exhaust <laughs> tips out of the way and changing the limiting component to be the rear bumper instead of the tips now you may be asking why not just have a shorter exhaust well Ford says quote the application of this system does not interfere with the looks styling or aesthetics of the vehicle this patent was filed in both the US and Europe so we may see these on vehicles in both markets isn't that an interesting solution to that problem? It is. It's interesting. I, I don't understand their answer. I mean, obviously, the tip is supposed to extend out past the body so that, you know, the, the chemicals from the exhaust don't seep up into the cabin, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, I wonder if it's going to have some sort of safety feature where it's like, hey, if, you know, you can only do it for a short period of time, you push the button or... So next up here... The 2022 Audi A8 gets a fresh new look. I love it. I just, I love Audis lately. I think they've been doing a great job. So they haven't given us any of the full technical specs, but they gave us some great photos of the new luxury sedan. The biggest changes are the front fascia being the headlights and the grille, with the rear also seeing some updates, especially in the taillights. With this, we also get some more wheel designs, color options, and entertainment screens for the rear passengers as an option. The A8 powertrain is expected to be the same, including a 3 liter, 335 horsepower V6, a 453 horsepower twin turbo 4 liter V8, and a 563 horsepower twin turbo 4 liter V8 found in the S8. We won't get the new A8 for a while longer, and the official release date is not yet announced. But man, this just looks good. I like it. I like yeah, I, I, sedans. We have a differing opinion on this one, actually. Ooh, what's your opinion? I, I think it looks just kind of average. It but doesn't look special it's not as an Audi. It's not necessarily supposed to. No. It's the A8. It's the grandpa money. That that's they what you're are, buying. That's what you're buying it they, for. It should be like beautiful and luxurious and and kind of stunning from outside. Not extreme, but I current. I feel like some of a lot of their current stuff feels that way in the larger car. Like you you know it's something special and that one to me just sort of the lines and everything just looked a little basic. I don't know. Maybe the photos don't do it justice. I that's think, all. I'm I think you're over exaggerating. I, I think. I mean, it's it's the A8. It's it's yeah. like the S class. There's not really anything special when you look at an S class. Except you look at it and it's like it's sleek and it's like sophisticated 
and yeah, I guess I don't, we, just dis- we just disagree. I don't, I'm not I, feeling it I, here. I'm maybe maybe it's just the way it's appointed. Maybe the because I feel like if you're looking for like luxury, those are not the right wheels. Oh no, you know what I mean? Like, so maybe maybe that's what's taken away f- uh, for me. Yes, yeah. I mean that. That, that would make sense. Anyway, but, but what about the interior? Is it's, that not striking and luxurious enough for you? It's it looks great. I'm yeah, just messing with you. I'm not no, sure I mean, about the. Interior's the is that fantastic. orange? Or is it just like a weird color the way it's, it's coming just through? Tan with yeah, the red lights making it look orange. Yeah. Um, how about those integrated screens, though? Huh? Yeah, looks solid. They, pretty, somebody solid actually did those. some design work. They good actually used that's awesome. their career. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it, that's uh, that's good. It, I, I I'm still getting a little nervous about going too far with the touchscreen stuff. You know, yeah, like, just if it doesn't work or what? No, just like you want to hurry up and turn your air conditioning on or your heat on in the cold. But like what I like about this one is it appears there's a designated kind of screen for it. Kind of like they're they're separated. Yeah, it's not one menu for everything. There's two different menus and it looks like different options within those. Yeah, menus, and and it could I be like it could be. I just I have had a few rentals lately where like some of the things like the 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 everyday functions that you try to access on a regular basis yeah. they're buried deep in the infotainment oh, yeah. system. Click it's a like, bunch of things and come do, on. Yeah. like I just want to grab a you know the knob and turn it down. You know Agreed. that's it. So hopefully you know they they stay true to to making th- some of those things accessible especially from a safety standpoint too you're driving you know in in a the very basic cars when you're driving you can reach over and you know what you you know you what controls know. you're touching yeah. and you, you can turn them up or down you have to look at at you know That's a, a screen point. when you're doing that so yeah, anyways you're right yeah what do you think of audi's trend with those steering wheels have that little brace kind of between in that bottom section there. Yeah, They've not been bad. Doing that a lot lately. Yeah, I like to drive I like one it. and just yeah. see if it like offers any unique like hand positions where you, that where you can you have. Just you for know? cruising. Seems interesting. Yeah. All right, next up here, this is pretty cool. Ford has announced the full reveal date of the next generation Ford Ranger. So the next Ford Ranger will reveal in Europe on November 24th, with the US version being revealed shortly after. There are also rumors about a Ford Ranger Raptor finally being available, which would be mm, awesome. That'd be cool. And with recent spy shots, it appears the new Ranger will feature much more similar like front design elements to the new Ford Maverick and like the F-150, especially with those headlights. And it is expected to use the same powertrain as the previous model with a turbocharged 2.3 liter four cylinder engine producing 270 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. Cool. Honestly, I like these little trucks. They're, they, little trucks are kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like them. Um, I can't wait to see what this one looks like. Oh, 100%. Because now they're, like, they're, now they're, they're kind of making it more of a midsize. Yeah. You know, and, and because of the Maverick mm-hmm. and also. Yeah. And imagine like a Raptor version of that. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. Cool. They need a Raptor Maverick. You need that, something like a Raptor Maverick. <laughs> yeah, that would need, be awesome. You need something that's small, compact, and and but then crazy. Like you can, you know, because then it's light, so you can off road it. You know, and, and I and, bet those things are already dirt cheap. So I mean, you throw a Raptor on there, you'd be in yeah, you'd be in pretty good price and range. You wouldn't even have to go like, I don't know. It seems like you wouldn't need 600 horsepower in the thing, you know, because of the weight and everything. Um, no, yeah. no, no, you you're could, right. You could make a, a pretty cool. Yeah. And then it would be good for rock crawling as well oh, as be awesome. like desert running and stuff. That, now that's yeah. an idea. We got to pitch that to Ford execs over Ford. there. Hey, do it, please. Yeah. That'd be <laughs> awesome. So as you know, this week was SEMA and they have blessed us with some insane builds. And one of them, which is really cool being from Chevy, introducing the beast. Yeah. This insane off-roader has six 650 horsepower and is based off the Silverado full-size pickup and has 37 inch tires. This features a supercharged 6.2 liter LT4 V8 engine with a 10 speed automatic transmission and all wheel drive. This means it matches the horsepower output of the C7 Corvette Z06. This also features plenty of upgrades like LED lights, skid plates, and a full off-road suspension setup. This thing's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that thing's cool. Yeah. Like how ridiculous. Just buggy. It's yeah. just crazy. Yeah. I'd love to drive that thing off. That's why I see them as cool. Because so you much get fun. to see what's in people's heads. Like, oh. you know, 
I mean, I, it'll never I can't make production, imagine. but like, yeah, that's cool. Like some of the money that has to go into some oh, yeah. people come with the most absurd things, and yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, like people come with like there was that one year a couple of years ago they had a super rare. It's like a million dollar one of those old Mercedes Gold Wings. They slammed on bags <laughs> and like yeah. done all this crazy stuff to it. It's ridiculous and it's awesome. Next up here, this is some bad news for New uh -oh. York car enthusiasts. New York has just passed yet another law aimed against car enthusiasts. The New York governor, Kathy Hochul, signed a new bill that moves the exhaust noise violation fine from $150 to $1,000. The new bill is called SLEEP and stands for Stop Loud and Excessive Exhaust Pollution. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> this is now the steepest fine in the country, with the second being $500 per offense in Colorado. Colorado, actually, oh. which I did not know that we had such a, such a strict law about that here. The new bill also includes a provision for shops that install these parts, allowing the state to pull a shop's license if they are caught installing these mufflers over three times. It's pretty strict. Yeah, well, I, I see a lot of uh, enthusiasts running to New Jersey to get their exhaust put on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, down if a you're a bit. shop owner in New Jersey, you should hype it up. Like, oh, you should absolutely. tell tell those guys, hey, New come York on. special. Come on over here. Exactly. You come in with New York plates, we'll get you a discount. <laughs> totally. The genius. I love that. <laughs> Now, we have more news from Ford. I swear today's just been a Ford kind of day. Ford has revealed they are putting a V8-powered Bronco into production. These are not intended to be street legal and are only for oh, race man. truck use in races like the Baja 1000. This is called the Bronco DR and will feature the 5-liter Coyote V8 from the current Mustang GT. And it is expected to have over 400 horsepower, but no official specs have been released yet. Yeah. Ford says much of the styling is obviously derived from the Bronco R and tons of modifications are there for off-road capability if you couldn't tell. The first 50 examples of the Bronco DR will be available for sale late 2022 and are priced in the mid quote $200,000 range. Makes sense. That thing's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Heck of a desert racer. Oh yeah. I'd like to see some of those things speeding around. That'd be awesome. Taking a couple of jumps. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now next here. Tesla has issued a new recall with the National Highway and Safety Administration. This recall affects 12,000 vehicles operating its full self-driving beta software version 10.3 because of false collision warnings and unnecessary auto emergency braking events. The company then released an update about two days later and has fixed more than 99.8% of the cars as of October 29th. The issue affected vehicles from 2017 to 2021 and every model in Tesla's current lineup. The original update had affected communication between two onboard chips where one went into a low power mode when used during sentry mode and summon, which caused inconsistent detection of moving objects. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, Seems like for these for these electric cars, recalls are very common, but they're very fixable. Because it's just like a software update. You yeah, send out a new update, write, fix it. Write some new code. Yeah. Yeah. I, at least the errors were in favor of safety. Oh, yeah. It 100%. sounds like they were, you know. It's not the car's taking a dive off the road. With the, right, right. <laughs> it's the, hitting the brakes when it didn't need yeah, to. Yep. Yeah, too much brake. Yeah, exactly. Which, I mean, uh, that, not that if, bad. If you're going to ride it with uh, and be cautious, that's, yeah. that's the way to do it, I, I mean, suppose. Yeah. Hmm. And again, it's a Ford kind of day. Another Ford piece of news here. So early this year, we had a first look at Ford's electric crate motor, the oh, Illuminator, yeah, yeah. Yeah. which is a 281 horsepower electric motor pulled from the Mustang Mach-E GT. Well, Ford has given us an example of how these can be used at this year's SEMA, putting in a 1978 F100 pickup. The F100 Illuminator concept uses the same dual motor electric powertrain from the 2021 Mustang Mach-E GT performance, which Ford claims is 0 to 60 of 3.5 seconds from. The two, mo the two motors provide a combined 480 horsepower and 634 pound-feet of torque, and the truck nails the retro look on the exterior, and then the interior gets a modern refresh with leather and a large Look at screen. the interior of that thing. Isn't that <laughs> awesome? <laughs> what? The okay. Illuminator crate motor is a Available online now, actually, for sale at $3,900. What? These are also street legal in all 50 states. Yeah. That's kind of very interesting. That is not... 
that's not how to, I thought it would be no, much man. more. But you know what? What you don't know. The battery. Yeah, yeah. The battery packs. What's involved with trying to get that, and then what type of uh, transmission can oh, you I, connect it with? I don't even know but that whole that. the whole crate engine like market uh, will be wild. turned on its head. If they end up with like full packages yeah, that, exactly. that have so everything complete, yep. just here's the transmission or, you know, the transmissions you can use it with. Yeah, exactly. And here's now, the battery you know packs awesome. and the electronics just done. No, but we could totally, once the engine like goes in our, in the old truck, we can <laughs> throw in a little awesome. electric, yeah. hide the batteries under the bed. <laughs> sit, look at this. In, I mean, I love this thing. I, I don't know. There's you just sort something of, cool about it. It's great that they went ahead and, and made an attempt at it. You don't like it. I see that truck and I'm like, oh, I wonder how it sounds. <laughs> right? Well, yeah. and, then, and then it sounds like nothing. Well, yeah, I know. But it's but, so cool for what it is. Yeah. No, but I, I think I think they'll have a, a completely like new market with uh, opening up a Crate Engine oh, program 100%. with with the um, electric motors. That's cool. Now, next up here, Acura has given us some pretty good news. So the prototype of the new Acura Integra will debut November 11th. The typical goal with these prototypes from Acura and Honda is to give us a good idea on what the production car's design will be. Acura has shared a few details already, those being the model will be a four-door hatchback and will have an optional six-speed manual transmission. I'm excited for Bring this. It. I think Integra. this is gonna be cool. It looks great. Like, it's like just, even the teasers. See, it's gonna be awesome. Mission accomplished. 100%. I'm teased. Like, let's, yeah. let's see yep, it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, sh show me the car. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, that is it for today's episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check us out on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Anthony C-I-F-A-L. And with that, you have an excellent rest of your week. Hey, thanks for uh, hanging out with us for a bit. We'll catch you next time. Peace out. <laughs>